AIA Vitality, your health is every choice you make. We are part of a global wellness program with over 1.65 million members in AIA across Asia. And in Singapore, we have more than 100,000 members on AIA Vitality. Members live healthier by knowing their health through online health assessments and screenings. They improve their health by logging exercises and enjoying the rewards to keep them going. And indeed, members are making improvements in their health. Even the vitality age gap has narrowed to less than a year. Best of all, you earn points for every activity. The higher your status, the greater the rewards. Including up to 15% off insurance premium on selected AIA plans. To keep you going, there is the weekly fitness challenge with personalized targets to help pace and improve your fitness. When you complete the challenge, you get a spin on the Vitality Wheel to earn Vitality Coins, which you can use at the Marketplace. That's not all. You also earn AIA Vitality Points for completing these activities. And very soon, you'll be on your way to Platinum status. And we sweeten the deal further with many exciting partner benefits that you can enjoy. With AIA Vitality, nothing gets better than a healthier you. So get onto AIA Vitality today because your health is every choice you make.
better sleep, better work. Employees need enough rest to be productive. out how we can help you lead healthier, longer, better lives. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to day one of the AIA Health and Wellness Live, powered by AIA Vitality. Let's start off the day with a panel discussion by our experts on the topic of the balancing act of working from home, morale, engagement, and productivity. But before that, let's welcome Ms. Wong Tzu Kid, Chief Executive Officer of AIA Singapore, who will first be making her opening address. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to AIA Health and Wellness Live 2020, powered by AIA Vitality. This is the first time that we are bringing many of our partners and leading experts in the various fields together virtually for two packed days of curated content to support you to live healthier, longer, better lives with Vitality. A big thank you to all our partners for their support. Indeed, with COVID-19, circuit breaker and safe distancing measures, it has fundamentally changed the way we have been engaging with our customers and our employees. Gone are the days where we can have big groups of customers coming together for a mega on-site event. However, through the power of technology, we can still be socially distanced, but digitally engaged. AIA has always been embracing new norms in providing positive experiences to individuals and families in Singapore with the help of technology. In the last few months, we have accelerated digital-first engagements and introduced many virtual initiatives such as AIA Live, our first ever regional online health and wellness event, spanning 13 markets, and AIA I Run for Vitality, our first virtual running event that finished just last week. Today's AIA Health and Wellness Live is one of our key initiatives to empower our customers to take a more comprehensive and holistic approach to health and wellness so that they can truly lead healthier, longer, better lives. Across these two days, you can expect to learn more on well-rounded health and wellness topics from fitness workouts to living and eating healthier and how you can take care of yourself better, both physically and mentally. To kick off today's session, we are going to talk about something that's very close to my heart and that's mental wellness. With most of us working from home for the past many months, it has led to the blurring of lines between work and home life in which we forget or even find it challenging and stressful to disconnect from work and connect with our family. How do bosses and even companies play a role in supporting our people to maintain a healthy and quality work-life balance. The future of work is about being confident in making personal work-life choices that inspire and energize you to do what you do every day. While it's as much as taking charge and being conscious of your personal choices, Employers play a very important part to instill empowerment and confidence in their employees. So join me and our panelists in the upcoming panel discussion where we look into 
the balancing act of working from home, morale, engagement and productivity. I hope you enjoy the session and the rest of today and tomorrow's program with our exciting two-day lineup for AIA Health and Wellness Live 2020, powered by AIA Vitality. Thank you. Hi, uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our AIA Health and Wellness Live, powered by AIA Vitality. This morning, we have a very insightful panel session to kick off our program today. Before I start the program, I would like to thank all our viewers out there who have taken time out of their work to join us this morning. I understand how it can be very challenging for all of us in this very fast-paced work society, knowing that there will always be work priorities waiting for us, isn't it? And therefore, we, have, we are kicking off this AIA Health and Wellness Life because we know the importance to champion and advocate the need to do more for our people's health, growth and mental. I'm so privileged today to have four of our panelists here. They are all people champions in their respective fields. Welcome, everybody. Allow me to do a quick introduction of each of them. First, I have Ms. Wong Si Kit, who recently assumed the role of Chief Executive Officer of AIA Singapore in July. She's been a part of the AIA family for more than seven years now, and she's one of the most vocal advocates for championing a future of health and work that prioritizes a more holistic approach to our overall well-being, particularly on mental health. And next, we have Mr. Dilip Kanan, who is the Regional Director for Grab for Business. He is a business builder when it comes to solving meaningful problems for the purpose of improving the lives of their drivers, partners, and communities. He's also a strong collaborative partner to companies across Southeast Asia to help them make a bigger community impact. And next, we have Mr. Brandon Cote, who is the Head of Human Resources for HSBC Singapore. And Brandon is responsible for the delivery of Singapore's people's strategy. He is also focused on a lot on placing a high priority on health and wellness. Last but not least, Dr. John Shepherd Lim, who is the Chief Wellbeing Officer of Singapore Counseling Centre. Dr. John is an experienced professional with more than two decades of experience in conducting counseling sessions helping many clients through many issues such as depression, stress, anger management, and many more. Today's session was centered around three themes, morale, engagement, and productivity. I'm sure this is no surprise to any one of us and it's a very relevant topic, as we know that our personal and work life has definitely changed and looked differently pre-COVID. And speaking of which, maybe it's a good moment for us to kickstart our discussion today. We have heard a lot of the buzzword around new normal, and I'm sure it's no surprise to any one of us. Can, can we have a little bit of discussion around how has this new normal impacted our employees at work, particularly in the areas of morale, engagement and productivity? Well, thank you, Lorraine. Thank you for having me. The COVID-19 has made a tremendous impact mm. on humankind, in particularly in the area of uh, mental health. And uh, at the Singapore Counseling Centre, uh, we've seen an increase in the number of clients uh, coming to us uh, for help. And in fact, we have registered about uh, more than 20% increase in the number of clients. And what's also very heartening is that many companies are recognising the importance of good mental health uh, mm -hmm. among uh, the team members. So as such, we've seen an increase in the number of companies reaching out to Singapore Counseling Centre. So we have been providing uh, talks on mental health, uh, topics like self-care to prevent burnout, uh, taking care of your mental health during the COVID-19 have been very popular topics. And what's also heartening to see is that uh, more companies are reaching out to us uh, to have their uh, companies enroll into our EAP programme, Employee Assistance Programme, uh, which means that uh, the employees can come to see a counsellor. And this has been most uh, helpful according to them uh, to improve the morale and uh, the productivity of the team members. So uh, during the circuit breaker especially, uh, you find that uh, uh, the mental health issues that arise has been mainly in two key areas, financial anxiety, 
uh, as well as relationship anxiety. And these two areas uh, have tremendous impact on one's mental health. So hence, uh, reaching out and being mindful of one's mental health is very, very important. How about Brendan? I know there is this uh, Speak Your Mind campaign. You know, maybe you can speak to us a little mm. bit more about that. Yeah, so HSBC in 2019, we launched the Speak Your Mind campaign with the, the goal of giving everyone a chance to have a voice in, you know, in, in that conversation and those people kind of giving them a platform if they, if they require the help um, that's needed. Um, and we've kind of progressed that through HSBC. So we've kind of progressed that out through e-learnings, through um, now virtual trainings for, for line managers to really help managers identify where there are signs of stress in their employees, uh, but also then um, kind of really enabling them to start that conversation. We all know that starting that conversation can be quite tricky. It, it, it is a lot more difficult when it comes to mental health than physical health. And so therefore trying to empower our managers to be able to kind of be close with the employees and spot changes in signs um, it has been really important to us. Um, I think on the actual kind of impact of COVID-19, I've seen kind of both sides, right? I think mm -hmm. we've seen a real big blur between home and work yeah. and, and people trying to find that balance. But then I, I'm very heartened when I hear stories about, you know, people all of a sudden saying, I don't have two hour commutes anymore. And I'm now getting to see my family more. I'm now able to have dinner with my, with my children or my, or, or my spouse. And that's great because that should have been happening originally. Um, so it's, it's allowed people to recalibrate. So I think, you know, I don't think we're quite in that new normal yet. I think people are still finding their way. And, you know, at, at HSBC, we're just here to try and help them find what's right for them. Mm, okay, great. Anything else to add, uh, Sukit and uh, Dalit? Sure. Thanks for the question, Lorraine. So um, uh, obviously, I can't speak for all companies, but at Grab, uh, what our fantastic HR team has been working on, it can be divided into two buckets, right? Uh, one is how do we help people grow and how do we help people stay engaged and motivated. So uh, the spurt in growth based programs within Grab hasn't uh, slowed down at all. In fact, it's actually accelerated as we have made our way through the pandemic. Uh, and a lot of focus has been given on psychological safety, mm -hmm. uh, but also in helping teams to understand how they can grow emotionally uh, and not just from a skill set based perspective. Right? Um, and we also uh, have um, quite a few programs internally that help people stay motivated. We have mentoring programs, employee resource groups. Uh, we even have Slack etiquette guides mm -hmm. um, because everyone's almost living um, every uh, conversation on Slack. Um, and, and all of these are kind of uh, fundamental in making sure that people exit different phases of the pandemic mm -hmm. in a much more healthier mental state than when they entered it. Mm. Yeah, thanks. Uh, interesting sharing. I, I, I would also like to share uh, what AIA uh, recently we have done a survey. Uh, we call that AIA Real Rewards Poll. And we had three very uh, interesting uh, findings. Number one, we, we found that uh, Singaporeans are now really increasingly adapting mm. beyond, looking beyond keeping active uh, to stay healthy. So that's good. Number two, Keeping healthy helps Singaporeans better manage their mental health. Yeah, so so that but but we also recognize that more needs to be done. So the third finding was Singapore continues to be the most active uh, in Asia even amid COVID nineteen. Very mm. encouraging results. Yeah. yeah. So as a result of the pandemic, um, our study also showed tell us that two in three Singaporeans realize that they have been taking their health for granted. Mm. Uh, in fact, an encouraging 75% experience at least one positive health change. Wow. So I think that's a good outcome from this pandemic. Yeah. yeah? We always say that there's uh, lots of opportunities right, within a crisis. So mm. guess what? We can see all these opportunities now. Mm. Um, our analysis um, also uh, tells us that uh, the mental health is really very insightful. A decent proportion of people have improvements to their mental health, yeah, because they do simple things like sleep more, spending more time eating with the family, <coughs> as what Brandon said, yeah. But the same number also reported a decline in mental health. That's why we heard from uh, doctor that uh, he has uh, received 20% increase yeah, in people calling him for help. So many are feeling anxious about their mm. post-COVID-19 reality, uh, financial or relationships uh, anxiety, 
while we are making improvements, that's why more need to be done uh, to tackle the stigma that we still have today. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, so it's good to, to hear from all panellists here that it's a very balancing view. It's not all doom and gloom, definitely, but uh, there is so much more that we definitely can do in, in the state of the mental health for employees. And speaking of which, you know, I, I think in our very Asian society here, especially in Singapore, I think maybe there's a lot of mental health stigma that is still maybe um, an issue that is hovering around most of our workplaces. And maybe I want to hear from the panelists here. How do you think we can do more to tackle this mental health stigma that is um, maybe still occurring in, in the workplace, especially? Yeah. So maybe I can go first. Um, yeah. Let's talk a bit more about what we do at Grab. Right? So I, I think fundamentally it, it's, it's paramount for companies to say that it's okay to ask for help. I think uh, there has to be a culture within companies, and I'm very proud that Grab has that culture, mm. uh, where manage, people managers and leaders are encouraged by a COPS team to continuously keep checking with their teams to ensure that they're okay. Right? So okay is not just someone looking fresh and bright on a Zoom screen. Okay is also understanding whether they have all the tools at their disposal to the job and whether they're feeling purpose-driven uh, mm. and, and fulfilled at work as well. Right? Uh, so that's incredibly important. Uh, the second thing is, um, there is a pandemic raging, but life goes on and, and a lot of employees don't want to just be in a serious state of mind. Right? Mm. And, and then the second part of saying it's okay is that it's also okay to have fun. So, um, so, so Grab, is, you know, Grab is still a startup. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we have a lot of ideas that are experimented at different points in time. Mm. One of the more interesting ones that I saw was Grab Calm. Which is, which is an online you know, grabber to grabber kind of meditation session. My team tells me it's great. I haven't gone through it <laughs> because I'm actually very calm myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but that's one of the things that they do. And, and also very recently in our internal um, communications channel, I actually saw a video of our CEO, Anthony Tan, mm. uh, working out with other employees on the same Zoom call. Right? So it's okay to have fun. Exercising. It's exercising. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like he was doing the whole uh, hit uh, Hit routine, so it's it's okay to have fun. It's okay to stay, you know, kind of push people to stay healthy and make sure that they're okay. Uh, is always something that sh that should be top of mind. Mm. Yeah, and I think just yeah. to add to that, I mean, I think I think the tone from the top in an organization is hugely important. I think senior managers championing to also be a hundred percent all the time, and we know that's just uh, physically impossible to be. Mm. So I think managers showing a form of vulnerability can actually help that and create the culture um, that that we're kind of striving for really um, I, I love the peer-to-peer -peer learning um, you know we need to do more of that um, trying to create those types of environments where if someone's a really good cook they run a virtual uh, cooking session yeah, exactly. uh, for people and you know that is the future right you're going to see a lot more of that where people can just kind of you know dial into something or join something and that's really powerful because then that is that release that's that bit of fun um, it also builds, you know, fantastic relationships and collaborations, especially for a multinational workforce. Mm -hmm. So, um, hu you know, hugely important to kind of Absolutely. continue with that. Absolutely. Yes, uh, it is important that uh, we destigmatize uh, mental health issues, and it is okay to acknowledge mm -hmm. that we do have difficult feelings that come from time to time. Mm -hmm. Rather than denying those uh, difficult mm -hmm. feelings, which means that we have to use mm -hmm. more energy to suppress it. Uh, that leaves us in a heightened state of emotion, which is not really healthy. So uh, the process of destigmatizing uh, mental health issues, uh, like uh, you have shared, that uh, it begins from the top level. So it's heartening uh, to note that on Mental Health Day, our Prime Minister, Mr. Lee sen -Dun, has announced the setting up of a mental wellness task force, mm -hmm. whereby no Singaporeans will be denied help if they need help in this particular area. So during this time, uh, it is very important for us to recognize that even as the pandemic is raging and as the countries in Northern Hemisphere is entering to the winter season, uh, there's not really an end in sight. So we have to decide uh, right now for our mental health, uh, we are not waiting for the pandemic to be over in order to be happy. So we can be happy right now. So number one, we have to practice mindfulness. We must recognize uh, the emotions that may be going through us 
and certain emotions that come to us and thoughts, we can just let it pass by, every, just let it pass by because they don't define us. However, our most dominant thoughts do define us. So we need to recognize that every day we have certain thoughts and feelings coming by, we need not internalize them, just let it go. So uh, what is really important during this time, uh, more than ever before, that everyone learn to practice self-care. All right, if you care for yourself, it doesn't mean you're being selfish. All right, the practice of self-care actually enables you to multiply your creativity, it refreshes you, uh, it re-energizes and revitalizes you. And uh, self-care is a disposition. Uh, it is not something that we do when we go on vacation, which is right now a bit challenging to go overseas for vacation. Uh, we, we can do it every single day, all right, to care for ourselves. Uh, because many people are so caring for others. You know, and uh, they get burnt out, but they deny themselves a uh, 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 personal rest. So when we are able to self-care a lot better, we, we can go actually much further. So companies are realizing this, right? Uh, striking a good work-life balance, the practices uh, in Grab and HSBC and AIA, what you're doing, are really very strategic. Mm. Uh, it speaks very well uh, of your organizations uh, because you know, you recognize the strategic importance of uh, good mental health care among the team members. And uh, companies who recognize this usually uh, experience a much higher uh, productivity and they, uh, their innovative ability is actually above average. Because the greatest uh, asset of a company or even our greatest asset is our limited reservoir of energy. So our role is to harness uh, this limited reservoir of energy positive energy, creative energy, and direct into areas of innovation uh, for the betterment of the organization mm -hmm. and overall the betterment of the society. Wow, wow. how interesting. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. the reminder to, to exercise self-care and uh, practice uh, mindfulness. Yeah? Yes. These two, two are really the key mm -hmm. takeaway for me. Um, I, I also want to say that, yeah, I agree that we should never underestimate the impact of uh, mental well-being. Yeah? Um, a recent study by the National University Health System actually uh, also told us that people, Singaporeans working from home, are actually feeling more stressed than frontline workers. Yeah, I was, I was personally very surprised when I saw that report. But as we look deeper, how true it is, right? Because we are all sort of cooked up at home yeah. and, and you have your children and your spouse all working in that space all sharing the same space sometimes it can get very stressful yeah so at um, AIA we actually started the uh, has hashtag have you check in movement and um, similarly like Grab and uh, HSBC we hope that such initiatives uh, will really help the staff um, to, to, to take a back seat and uh, really look at how they can check in with their fellow colleagues every day. So it become a very important part uh, of our daily routine now. So that's, that has worked very well for us. Uh, not sure whether you guys saw the news that we also introduced a $1,000 financial assistant working from home. Mm. Um, that was uh, very interesting for us because at the start of that circuit breaker, when suddenly all of us have to work from home, uh, we realized that many of our staff suddenly they don't even have proper table, proper chair, and we realize that they have to, some even need to upgrade their, their, their notebook and things like that. So, um, and, and that's why we introduced a $1,000 financial assistant work from home. And uh, we, we heard that many staff actually used that money to buy a $500 chair. <laughs> because without that financial assistant, they would never think about buying such a good chair. And they were so appreciative. And that was, um, yeah, we, we, we were very encouraged uh, that that financial assistance has actually helped them. Yeah, and um, we also have, uh, uh, because we, we know that different people will embrace um, new norms at different pace. That's why as employers, it is important to really uh, make sure that we cater and customize, you know, because different people may uh, look at it differently. So lots of initiatives that still need to go out uh, lots of uh, activities still need to go up, whether it's exercising, whether is it have you checked in, yeah. mm. stuff like that. I think we need to continue yeah. Yeah. Uh, to do more of such things. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for all your generous sharing on the, I hope the, the people out there, you know, have taken some tips 
on how to bring it back to your to your company. Talking about remote working, right? Even though you know recently we know that there has been more safety measures for us to bring more employees back to the workforce to work in the office, we know that the default mode is still working from home. Has technology, in your view, become an enabler or a hindrance to our employees' um, morale and engagement and, and mental health particularly? Uh, well, uh, working from home can be quite challenging for many because on top of uh, certain under, underlying relationship uh, issues uh, that has been ongoing pre-pandemic and during the circuit breaker especially, uh, those issues can be exacerbated. And uh, there was a rise in the number of filings for uh, separations and divorce during this season. And talking about hyper-connectivity, uh, you find that uh, because of technology, uh, many felt that the work-life balance has been blurred because they receive a lot of notifications uh, via, via those devices. And if they have children at home, uh, the children are also sending them a lot of notifications. <laughs> yeah. and all this can be very uh, overwhelmed. So I would suggest that uh, uh, a healthy uh, work-life boundary needs to be drawn. And as much as possible, uh, do follow uh, the routine of work. That means if you're supposed to take a break at one uh, PM for lunch, just follow accordingly. Mm. And if you're supposed to end work, let's say at 6 o'clock, uh, just follow it accordingly. And segregating, uh, managing the workspace, is, uh, the home space is very important. Uh, it's very heartening to hear uh, AIA has such a wonderful ground. It's really very helpful. Mm. So if they're able to set up a space whereby they go there just uh, to work, so in other words, they don't go there to do anything else, but it's just to work. It is very, very helpful. In other words, the moment they sit down, it's the focus on work. And it's very good for their mental health. So that's one way. And um, uh, it is more challenging for parents though, because they have children at home, especially home-based learning. So very interestingly, a um, um, uh, lady shared with me how she managed that. When she needed to take phone calls, she, she would put on a tiara on her head. <laughs> and tell the children, when you see mommy wearing a tiara, <laughs> a mommy cannot be disturbed. Wow, and and the children are taught that way. So I think it's quite interesting, all right? So for the guys, they say you can wear a cap and you know, just tell your children, mm. all right? So uh, this, these are some of the things that people has learned in order to adapt a lot better. Mm. So nevertheless, uh, work from home, I think is here to stay for quite a while. Mm. So we should adapt to it well. And, uh, and be productive. Definitely yeah. important. I mean, imagine the employer also being very supportive to yes, embrace indeed. the fact that it's okay for my child yes. to be with me. And of course, the child will get bored very easily and will just get out from the screen, right? But it's also okay to say, yeah, it's okay, you want to stay here for a while to watch what mommy is doing in the meeting? It's fine. So yeah. that is a bit of the, the acceptance and helping them. Yeah, you brought up a very good point. Uh, during this season, uh, I've delivered uh, thoughts on mental health online mm. uh, for many uh, companies. And uh, in the screens, I can see some of them holding the children as well. <laughs> so yes. I think that, that, that speaks of a very good culture where the employer yes. do understand yes. uh, it is okay. okay. And uh, some of the employers even encourage their family members to attend the talk as well mm. uh, online. Mm. So I think it's quite heartening. And of mm. course, uh, greater awareness uh, needs to, uh, we need to bring up to higher awareness on the importance of mental health during this time. Right. Yeah. And, and that's an interesting point because I think it's just the evolution of technology, right? It's, if you think yeah. back to when we used to do video conferences, you'd be mortified if somebody walked in the background to grab a book or if a child <laughs> walked in and we've all seen some of the, the very kind of yes. viral ones that yes. have kind of gone wrong a little bit. And now you don't even think twice about it. Now you yes. don't even apologize, right? That's because we've just got used to it so much. And actually, mm. because you're, pers you're allowing your personal life yeah. to form part of your work right. life. And it, yeah. you know, I think that's helpful for employees. And it's actually allowing us to be able to get to know our employees mm -hmm. a little bit better um, the, the, than maybe before and, 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 and for them to be a little bit less guarded. So yeah. I found kind of you know, technology a huge mm -hmm. help in that. But I think it is a, it, 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 without, without a doubt, technology has enabled us to, to kind of help support our employees to a greater extent. You know, so at HSBC, we're now able to onboard people virtually so they don't have to come into the office. They can use their own laptop from day one. They have all the, proto, you know, the programs that they need. 
um, you know, with AIA's help, we launched the telemedicine white coat, right? Yes. So we've been able to offer the Good. services to employees to get a GP consult, get medicine delivered to their door, yeah. right? That's stuff that we weren't doing mm-hmm. seven months ago, mm-hmm. right? And so, you know, we're doing things to enable them not to spend an hour and a half a time in a doctor's mm-hmm. office, right? So I think, you know, certainly, um, definitely a huge strides. However, I still don't think we found that normal yet, right? So some of the kind of the drawbacks of technology is that instead of having a five-minute conversation in the office like you used to with your colleagues, you now have a 30-minute Zoom conversation, which means you're backed up on Zoom all day and you can let bad habits creep in. So I think, again, we're still in that period of not exactly finding what works for us. Definitely. But I think once we do, then it will be incredibly powerful for all the organizations embracing yeah, it. I will agree, Brendan. I think there's also this part of it that it also can be very stressful if employers do insist that can you please turn on your video all the time i I think that part of it can you imagine the whole day of eight hours i'm turning on my video and every time i have to make sure that i turn on the video (laughs) i think that's a part of the employer also having the understanding that it's okay to not turn on the video and unless it's a very important let's say a board meeting or whatever we need to turn on for that it's, it's fine but not necessarily insisting that you need to turn on because there will be fatigue and, and stress yeah. for the employee self. I can also add something there, yeah. uh, Lorraine. Um, so, so, to Brenda, so Brandon's point, um, so technology cuts both ways. Right? Mm. Um, and um, what is interesting that, that I've observed in, in my teams and a lot of uh, grab leaders have also observed in their teams is procrastination is the worst thing to do when you have technology that is ready <laughs> to enable you to not procrastinate. So uh, what I mean is, when we are in this situation and technology is the way that we engage with our, with our colleagues and our customers, mm-hmm. decision making is key. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, don't let consensus be the enemy of quick decision making. Right? Mm-hmm. Because your teams are waiting for quick, uh, productive, efficient sessions, whether, they'd say, whether it's internal or external. So decision making has to be quick and, 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 and forthright. Um, the second thing is uh, there are now genuine questions about utilization of time related to productivity, right? So, so within Grab also, the, there's been an organic um, groundswell of questions about, do I really need this meeting to be one hour long? Mm-hmm. Can we do sure. this in 30 minutes, right? Can we do sure. this even in 15 minutes? Mm-hmm. Right? And rather than have a face-to-face video call to ask you two questions, can I just slack it to you? Mm-hmm. And then you reply to me, and I just tell you, can I have an answer in X number of minutes? And I get that answer in X mm-hmm. number of minutes, right? Uh, there's also another aspect of this that we, in, in my division, which is the B2B part of Grab, have discovered, which is um, you know, necessity, necessity is the mother of invention. So to Brandon's point about employee onboarding and offboarding, uh, Grab has a service called Grab Express, which is connected mm. to, to the Grab for Business platform, right? which is what corporates use as a one-stop solution. And a lot of companies have now started doing employee onboarding and offboarding by sending them materials, laptops, mm-hmm. joining swag, right. through a Grab Express that they booked through our platform, <laughs> and also offboarding them when, when the need arises through wow. that. So you might have a future where companies, and a lot of companies have already said they're committed to a permanent work from home environment. Yes, right? You might have a future where employees work from home throughout a two or three year short span in the company and get onboarded and offboarded remotely. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think that's already, as you say, that's already it's happening. Already happening. I, yeah. And at HSBC, we, I mean, we we've kind of debated whether we would allow people to work from home fully, like mm-hmm. full time. Um, and at this point, we've resisted that because we still believe mm-hmm. there is an important um, area of connection, mm-hmm. collaboration, yeah. being part of that team. And I don't think our technology has got to that stage that somebody can feel part of that team. Because if you think around, we hold town halls, we do yeah. offsites, we do you know, team bonding events, right? It's usually in person. It's not normally incorporating kind of the virtual element. So, you know, until we get there, I think it's gonna be quite tricky to have people working full time. But that being said, working four four days a week from home, absolutely. And and, and, and to a schedule that suits them. And there's there's also a lot of folks who love working from home, Mm -hmm. who love the flexibility, who love the the ability to have a healthy mix of personal and work life right there. So Mm. I think there's going to be more choice. Yeah, right. And and, and choice is always good. Yeah, I think at the end of the day is a balance, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Through the circuit breaker, we we also realized AIA, I mean, working from home, uh, it it will become a new normal. Yes. Uh, But we also recognize that if you are are 100% working from home, 
uh, I really miss those physical meetings that I can. <laughs> Me too. I can see Lorraine's face quick and, and sparring all that, you know? and brainstorming. So, so, yeah, Brendan, you're right. I, I we also recognize that working from home is new normal, but there will be some days, perhaps a few days, a couple of days, where we should still come back yeah. and have that physical interaction. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, we we are outcome focused, right? So. Whether you work from home in the office, as long as, as long as we deliver the outcomes that we want, I think we have we have we can take ourselves and say we have been productive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you made a very good point in in the term outcome. Mm. So rather than focus on the number of hours of yeah. work, uh, we should focus more on the outcomes. Mm-hmm. So like you mentioned, Lauren earlier on that. Uh, if employees require their staff to turn on the video, Zoom, for example, uh, eight hours a day, that can be quite uh, stressful on the mind. And uh, rather than focus on the number of hours, I, I, there was an employee who came to see us. Uh, she was feeling very, very stressed because uh, she was required uh, to check in every hour. Wow. Okay, wow. To, uh, so to report oh. every hour online. <laughs> So she finds it a bit stressful. So we need to be very mindful uh, in order for productivity and efficiency to rise in a, a company, even during this time, uh, the trust between the employee yes. and employer yeah. uh, is very, very strategic. And uh, once uh, there is a good trust and uh, people tend to be more engaged, they want to contribute and they're mm-hmm. happy to do so. Yeah. so uh, so this partnership uh, is very, very important between the employer and the employee. Mm-hmm. So uh, nevertheless, of course, uh, it's quite different uh, having face-to-face meeting. But like we say, this is going to be the new normal. And uh, I also will encourage, uh, you know, in terms of interaction, uh, team leaders, managers uh, can ha- organize uh, sessions online, uh, not just to talk about work, you know, we can have a coffee mm-hmm. session. All right, and just catch up with one another. And you can actually observe signs that if a team member is not coping too well, and uh, you know, just learn something about psychological first aid, uh, people tend to share their feelings a lot more uh, when they have psychological safety. In other words, mm-hmm. uh, if they don't think they're going to be judged, they don't think they're going to be despised, they tend to share a lot more. And the, all we need to do is to render a listening ear. We are not yes. able to solve all their problems, I agree. but when they are able to share, uh, they, they have some form of healing within. Mm. That someone listens, mm. so uh, the trust between the employee and employer is more vital than ever before during this time. Mm. It's, a, it's a really good point. I mean, the role yeah. of the line manager is critical. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, and what we're trying to do is help support them and to you know educate them to run sessions on how do you lead teams virtually when they're all mm. over you, especially if you have a workforce which was predominantly in the office beforehand, right? Because that's a, it's a huge shift. And then to, to, to kind of the, the doctor's point is, they need to actually be closer to their employees now because they're not seeing them every single day in the office. So you do need to have those check-ins built in mm. to mm. be able to track how they are to make sure that they're coping as yeah. well as possible. Yeah. Um, and that, that element of trust is, is, is paramount. I think it's, it's to also find a balance of I'm checking in with you not because I want to see what you're doing, Correct. but more I want to know how you're doing. Indeed. And definitely <laughs> important, I think to Brendan's point, I think as a leader and a manager, you also need to be educated on how do you watch out for yes. certain signs mm. or let's say if you realize that the, the person is having a bit of um, down energy, you know, or not delivering, why is that so? Asking a lot of questions, the right questions, Will probably help you and, and help the employee to feel that okay someone is care for me you know and 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 yeah. maybe get the person to have professional help from the eap for example right yes. and, and with dr john maybe you know <laughs> put in the corner with dr john <laughs> I think speaking of which you know what would you say to um, companies out there who are kind of unsure whether or not they want to continue the people first investment knowing that you know obviously with the COVID situation a lot of their business and profits have been impacted Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, regarding the people investment, we must recognize mm-hmm. that uh, all businesses, all organizations uh, yes. can only really thrive uh, when they have a good pool of uh, people talent. And it's the most strategic uh, to uh, any company, in fact. So, the, so I, I would really encourage this. Uh, I do understand, we all understand that certain 
uh, businesses have been badly disrupted and some form of business may never come back again. So it is important to re-engineer uh, the work processes and ask ourselves some really hard questions and uh, uh, look actively how we can redeploy, reskill the staff. Mm. And every one of us must recognize that it's not business as usual. Mm. And actually inbuilt in us, we are actually quite adaptable if we choose to. So we should learn to uh, uh, adapt and as far as what life is concerned, uh, the new normal to me is a process of learning and learning what we've really learned mm. and relearning again. So if we uh, expect this, then it will not uh, stress us out, but it is just the new normal, mm. learning and relearning and unlearning what we've learned. So uh, because uh, uh, things are really quite different right now, but we can all adapt really. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, our, our people are uh, our lifeblood of our business, right? Mm. If we don't take care of them, then who will take care of our business? Mm. So I think it is really even more important now to be a uh, people first uh, focus. Mm. Yeah, yeah uh, th that's a good point. You know, uh, studies have shown that uh, employees are more engaged, uh, more uh, they take uh, more ownership of the job and the business. Uh, when they feel that the employer is really very caring mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. felt that if they're treated as a human being uh, rather than just yeah. uh, a part yeah. of the whole process, yeah. uh, they, they tend to be more creative, they want to contribute more, uh, they want to put on the best version of themselves when it comes to work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is really very strategic. And uh, in this season and possibly post-COVID, uh, those companies who continue to believe in investing uh, in the people, uh, they, are they were going to rise very prom prominently uh, yes. even during this time and even post-COVID. Mm. So I want to encourage uh, every one of us, yes, uh, bottom line is important, yeah. but uh, the people all right, in the organization is as important and uh, investing in them uh, definitely will contribute, uh, make a very good positive difference to the bottom line. And I mean, of course, I work at HR, so I'm going to say people are people. The well-being is important, right? Uh, and, it, and, it, and it absolutely is, right? You know, um, you know, as I said, I think that, that's great. They are the lifeblood of the organization. They're the ones that are representing the firm, dealing with customers, dealing with customers' problems, trying to find solutions. And if they are not able to perform at their best, then we are giving a substandard service to our clients. Um, I think it's also important from a company in this day and age to mm -hmm. also make sure that you're challenging your employees. If you think about the firms that are striving in this day and age, they have a culture where people want to learn. They have that learning culture built into their DNA. Mm -hmm. And firms need to embrace that, right? So they need to be investing in future skills and investing in the training and mm -hmm. um, that kind of skill gathering. The, the professional conversion programs to reskill, retrain, um, you know, where, where some uh, roles become obsolete and then there's new opportunities. Massively important to have that culture set within your firm because if, if you don't, your people start getting left behind. We know that, not, that impacts their mental health um, if they're feeling about job security and, and kind of where they fit into the future. So again, not being afraid to challenge your employees to keep their skills up to date is massively important. I love that point about culture. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, pre, you know, this is not just a, uh, a new thing that I've, uh, that I've seen or Grab has seen uh, during COVID. It's pre-COVID, it's during COVID, it's gonna, it's gonna stay on even after there's a resolution to COVID. And which is, why am I working in this organization? Right? What is my purpose here? Purpose. Uh, and that's, that's, a fa that's a fundamental question that a lot of employees will be asking, especially during COVID. So it's very important for companies to think about their own purpose and mm -hmm. for employees to understand how that gels with their own purpose mm -hmm. and cultural values. So for example, at Grab, uh, we follow four H's. So honor, humility, heart, and hunger. Right? Mm -hmm. And these are our four cultural uh, pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it, it's something very easy to understand. It's something very easy to align to. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of the focus that we spend on, not just on L&D and internal programs, mm -hmm. but also when we look at people who want to join Grab is, are you looking at it just for a job, from a job perspective, or do you really want to make a social impact mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia? Right? Uh, and when people come in with that mindset of, yes, I'm aligned with this purpose, and it kind of makes me uh, want, to, uh, want to contribute more, mm -hmm. research has shown that purpose-driven organizations have 40% more retention, 30% more productivity, 
Mm. Uh, people feel people feel more more driven, right. uh, more mission driven, right. uh, and overall, there's a positive net effect to the company. Right, right, definitely. I think purpose is what drives you, right? Yep. And and without that, you know, I think sometimes you know you, you know that the outcome will come only when the employees themselves feel why am I waking up feeling energized to go to work every day? Exactly. I think yeah. that's that's the responsibility of the employers to help the employees discover their purpose as well. Yep. Speaking of which, you know, um, I know employers shouldn't be alone in all of this, right? We want to do more for employees. What what are some of the good partners out there that you have actually partnered with? to help, you know, drive our employees' engagement and morale and productivity? Should, you should partner um, your employee benefits insurer. <laughs> Whoever insurer that's taking care of your employee benefits, talk to them <clears throat> and, and see what are the value-added services that they can provide. Because, mm. I mean, at AIA, um, we, we are an employee benefits provider. So we, we introduce uh, many various uh, platforms to help the, uh, the companies, um, whether is it talks, whether is it um, con- talking about mental wellness and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, the, the, the white coat that you mentioned, mm-hmm. Brandon, the telemedicine that we uh, gave to all our corporate uh, customers uh, was a very good initiative mm-hmm. that um, allow employees to just go through online. And, and that is a partnership between uh, AIA and the doctors. Mm-hmm. And that provided a uh, remote uh, telemedicine services that was a really very helpful, I think. Mm. So, so there's a lot of good stuff that your employee benefits uh, provider, the insurance company, actually can do a lot um, to help to see what else you can 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 bring to your corporations. Yeah, can partner you. Yeah, I well. completely agree, and we've done a lot of work. <laughs> Thank, thankfully, we've done a lot of work with AIA. So yeah. we rolled out a, a five ways of wellness program um, during Circuit Breaker in a way to kind of have themes, um, you know, focus on, focusing on different parts of, of kind of well-being, uh, looking to try and have as much interactive connection as possible, and we're going to continue that. I think, obviously, your EAP provider, hugely important, kind of, you know, making sure that you're maximizing what we're, you know, what we're providing to staff. At HSBC, we've actually just um, started with the City Mental Health Alliance, so we're a founding member of the City Mental Health Alliance here in Singapore. They have uh, a chapter in London and Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. That's going to be hugely important for us because it's with other firms. It's sharing best practice. It's in a, mm-hmm. you know, we don't care that standard chartered or part of it, right? Because when it comes to mental health and well-being, we all need to be playing a part mm-hmm. to help that. So it's actually a really good way for corporates to get together mm-hmm. um, and learn best practice and then roll that out in, in, in kind of your, your mm-hmm. you know, with, with, within your business. So for us, that's something that we're going to kind of continue. But you're right. It's trying to maximize everything we can because there's really not <laughs> enough that we can do. Yeah, resources Well, are Brandon, finite. I think that's really good. Uh, that uh, you gather the industry partners together, you don't see them as competitors in this space, and uh, collaborate together and adopt the uh, good uh, practices. So the traditional model for many companies has been, in terms of uh, 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 employee benefits, if they are physically unwell, uh, they uh, do subsidize or uh, pay for the doctor's consultation and medicine, etc. Mm-hmm. But increasingly, it's very heartening to see uh, many companies are recognizing the importance of mental health and uh, seeing a uh, enrolling into the uh, EAP program with Singapore Counseling Center. Uh, we have seen uh, quite a drastic increase in the number of companies. Mm-hmm. So they find that it's more mm-hmm. a strategy because uh, n- 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 no, no one is ever exempted from the issues of life. So I realized that in life it's not uh, what has happened, but rather your consistent uh, final response to that which has happened that will determine the final outcome. And speaking to a uh, professional like a counseling psycholog- uh, psychologist is most helpful. And uh, people uh, on the onset of a uh, mental uh, challenge, for example, came uh, speaking to a counsellor to prevent it from uh, growing, escalation is very important because if the person enter into the stage of clinical depression, uh, counselling is of very little help. They have to see a psychiatrist who is a qualified medical doctor uh, trained in the, uh, dispensing of psychotic medications uh, to, for mental health. And uh, those are very, uh, a lot more costly. And in order not to reach that particular stage of clinical depression, uh, we should be quite open, all right? Uh, even uh, to seek help when we need yeah. that, because no man is an island. Mm. So 
uh, speaking to someone and the role of the counsellor is to mitigate certain cycle of uh, uh, unhealthy, unconstructive yeah. thoughts and to help the person change uh, the perspective and then they can be functional again. So life is all about us realizing our potential. We want to realize our potential. However, uh, issues of life can traumatize us mm -hmm. and that limits us from realizing our potential. So when we deal with those issues, you find that our wow. creativity and our energy level actually arise. Mm. So during this time, many are experiencing very low energy. They, they, they feel very fatigued very often. Yes. And it has, to do, uh, on, uh, it has to do a lot with the burdens, the demands that's placed on them that they may not be coping too well. Right. So anyway, all, all, all of you uh, are doing great jobs. So I'm very heartened to hear from all of you, <laughs> all right, each of the company that is not just uh, you know, uh, the bottom line per se, but uh, it's the whole uh, functioning of a very healthy ecosystem. So mm. uh, congratulations to all of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for all your generous sharing. You know, I think the community here definitely needs to support one another, right? I think as a HR person myself, Brendan, I can also speak um, to all the viewers out there, to the employers out there, that how important it is during this crisis, moreover, you need to do more to engage your employees. Because when the economic comes up again, you need to make sure that your employees felt that you have done the best for each of the employees and they will stay with you, even in ups and downs. I think that's the responsibility for me always, you know, and in partnering with the with Kid um, to help also the companies out here to do the best for the employees. Right, so we have a few minutes left, you know, and maybe I would like to open up some questions that we've collected from the audience earlier. One of the questions was, um, most companies conduct annual surveys to track employees' engagement and morale. Do such surveys really reflect the true sentiment from employees? Maybe uh, Dr. John and Brendan, <laughs> HR, you know, you can uh, weigh in on this question. Um, it all depends very much on how the questions are structured. And um, if employees uh, uh, mm. do not have the psychological safety or they have the thought, if everyone is saying that morale is good, and they're the only one that says not so good, uh, there's always this concern of being blacklisted and uh, there's no psychological safety. It's just like uh, the employee assistance program. Uh, initially, uh, some employees uh, are reluctant to uh, come for the counselling though the company has been enrolled into the program. The reason being is that they thought whatever issues they may share about the workplace challenges, their personal life, uh, we are going to report uh, to the company. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so we have to assure them it's fully confidential, we do not do that at all. And then once they are assured, uh, they are more open to share. So likewise, when it comes to all this survey, uh, uh, usually um, if, if there is psychological safety, or uh, studies have shown that if the survey uh, does not require them to review their identity, they tend to be more honest. Okay, so at the end of the day, it all depends on the trust uh, culture of that particular company. Yes. Uh, and then I, I think I would add, uh, I, I completely agree with that. I, I think um, a couple of things. One is I think a lot of employees suffer from survey fatigue a little <laughs> bit, right? We're constantly asking for feedback. And so I think it's really important for companies to play back what they've done with that feedback if they want to continue to get that feedback from their employees, right? Because well, why are you asking for 15 minutes of their time if you're not going to do anything with it, if it's just ticking a box? So as a company, we need to show the employees that that feedback matters and this is what we've done off the yes. back of it, right? So I think that's hugely important. I think things like the employee engagement survey, understand it, it's a data point. Yeah. You know, should your whole strategy be set on that moment in time that right. somebody was maybe feeling on top of the world or feeling very stressed? No, but it's a trend, um, it's a data point, and therefore you factor it into your other people data points like attrition um, and you know sick days and all those right. types of things to really get a sense as to the engagement in your company. Right. Okay, um, for, for the next question, you know, maybe to Sukit. The government has been investing in supporting working parents such as extending paternity and maternity leave providing financial support and childcare leave, etc. What can companies do more to support employees who may be single but have aging parents to take care of? What's your view, Sikit? I, I think we should include them. I mean, we need to create that inclusive environment. 
um, not just uh, young parents with uh, young children, mm. but also singers with aging parents, they have equal responsibility, uh, just right. like the young parents. So it is important to create that inclusive environment mm -hmm. to make sure that we take care of all pockets of employees, not just young parents with young children. Mm -hmm. So the quick answer is just make sure we extend, inclusive. Yeah. extend the benefits to all the singers with aging parents as well. Right. Yes, and right. we can do that. Okay. And for the last question, you know, to Dilip, yep. while we try to balance morale, engagement and productivity, trust is also a very important aspect. How can companies and employees balance the trust between them, especially in a very remote working environment? Easy question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. No, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a very pertinent question. Thank you, Lorraine. Yes. So, um, so, so trust is, obviously, trust is very, very difficult to earn and mm -hmm. very easy to lose. Mm. Right? Um, and uh, one of the things that we have been, we have been looking at Grab, and I can see that's happening, from a lot of HR initiatives is, uh, how do you build a leadership culture of positivity and empowerment? Right. right? So if you have your existing leaders and your next generation of emerging leaders who are steeped in a culture of being positive, being humble, um, who genuinely have empathy, who care, then trust is a natural outcome of those, mm -hmm. of those learning traits as well, right? Uh, but also trust goes both ways, mm -hmm. uh, which means it's just not enough that I trust my teams or the company trusts me to manage my teams. Um, the communication that we spoke about earlier, the transparency in the communication uh, and the way in which we empower our teams should also allow our teams to feel that they can also trust what they're hearing from their managers and from the company as well. And it's an ongoing process. It doesn't, it doesn't start or stop and fits. Uh, but I can tell you very honestly, if the trust breaks between the team and the people who are supposed to be leading the team, it's very difficult to build it back. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot today, definitely. I hope our viewers have. Any last words for the audience um, as well before we um, part off? Uh, yes, <laughs> I'll start <laughs> I'm off. I'm sure. And uh, well, I want to encourage all of us to remember this, that regardless of what we are facing, uh, life is infinitely precious. Uh, all problems can be resolved somehow. And uh, I want to encourage all of us to make the decision to live happy, live long Ooh. and prosper. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> live long and prosper. Yeah, mine won't be anywhere near as good as that. Uh, <laughs> no, look, mine, mine really is just to you know, look after your own well-being, um, you know, make sure that you, you yourself are, are, are healthy. You can't help support other people if you're not in the right place. Um, do make sure that you check in um, you know, with your colleagues, um, with any of your direct reports, ask how they are on a regular basis. And also then just kind of constantly um, share, constantly um, give suggestions on what we can do more as a company. Um, it is, you know, we have several channels for employee feedback. It is all taken into consideration. It does help form the strategies that we put together. So it, it's, you know, we can't do that without that feedback coming up. Thank you. Uh, thanks, AIA, for having me today. I uh, really appreciate <laughs> it. And to all of viewers out there, uh, just a few things that, that I've personally learned over the past few months, um, trying to navigate with my teams through this crisis. It's, it's about trust. Uh, there needs to be two-way trust. Um, uh, learn to let go more, um, and you'll easily find that people uh, enjoy that responsibility. Um, uh, be transparent. Uh, communication is extremely important during uh, pandemics like these because if your employees don't know what's, uh, what's being talked about at the upper levels of the company, mm -hmm. it starts to really get them worried uh, about their own future and the future mm -hmm. of the company as well. So transparent communication, regular, frequent, transparent communication mm -hmm. is key. Uh, but most importantly is psychological safety, mm -hmm. right? that your team and your, and, and your, and your colleagues uh, need to feel that they are psychologically safe enough to express themselves uh, and that they will be heard no matter what. Wow, thank you. It's a good, um, I just want to say to all the employees or all the individuals, <clears throat> it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to say I need a break. It's okay to say I need to take care of my mental well-being because uh, mentally healthy is equally or if not even more important than physically healthy. Because I always share this, you know, physically healthy, whether I'm physically healthy, sometimes you can see whether yeah. your BMI, your outlook, whether you're physically healthy. Yes. But whether you are mentally healthy, sometimes people can't tell. 
So it's okay to ask for help, yeah. And 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 of course, uh, remember self care and mindfulness. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important to keep ourselves mentally yes, healthy. Good reminders. Yeah, and to all the uh, employers, please communicate and communicate and communicate. Create that the environment to tell all your staff that it's okay if they are not mentally healthy and they want to ask for help. So the employers, please give that safe environment, that, that, that culture to, to, to allow everybody mm. to seek help. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you to Great. our four thank panelists you. today. Thank and you. Uh, thank you to our audience who have tuned in today. Well, thank you so much for all your audience participation here. You know, I hope you've enjoyed the session and learned as much as I did today. Um, we'll see you again soon. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.